it's that time of year again, time for that delicious hot chocolate. Hi everybody, welcome to my floss tube video. This is Janae. Um, I'm coming back after a bit of a hiatus, mostly just because I've been working a lot, you know. Um, and when I'm not working, I'm sleeping, or um, if I have some time off, I'm getting groceries, washing clothes. Um, I do have some free time, but I actually haven't been spending a lot of that free time stitching. I've actually gotten really into Minecraft lately, which um, I'm sure those of you with young children have probably heard of. It's kind of, you know, popular among the, um, I don't know, 8 to 12 set maybe. <laughs> but it's a fun video game. It's kind of like Legos. In fact, it's a little bit like cross stitch because it's like block by block placement. Um, so I've just been working on my world and, you know, building stuff and it's been really fun, you know, and it's a good way to relax after I get home. Um, if I don't feel like picking up a book and reading um, or sitting down to cross stitch, um, I can just spend some time on there and relax a little bit. Mm. Um, other things that have happened since I last spoke, I am, <coughs> excuse me, I am six years or six months, <laughs> six months through intern year. Um, and it has been a challenge, but um, I've been okay. Like emotionally, I've been all right. Um, I was a little worried about that, but it's been okay. You know, as soon as the pressure of tests was lifted after graduation, I feel like I can enjoy clinical work a lot more. Um, and I still get evaluations, but it's not like they affect my grades because I'm not graded anymore. Um, and so it's a whole lot less stressful than med school just because of that, because I don't have tests to worry about, um, except for I'm taking some, another board exam in March, or February, yeah, February. Um, but I don't have like tests to worry about and I don't have to worry about evaluations as much. I just do the best work that I can um, I try to like work with my patients as well as I can and then I go home and um, I enjoy my life. Um, I have been studying a bit more lately to prepare for that board exam um, in February but um, it's, it's not as stressful as my other board exams because um, the grade doesn't matter. I just need to pass. and. Um, I think I'm going to do fine based on how I've been studying lately, so we'll see. Um, how has my no buy been going? It has been excellent. Um, I simply haven't really had a lot of time to shop, and since I'm not cross-stitching a lot, um, not a lot of time, um, or not a lot of desire to go and buy more. Um, however, I did buy one thing. So. I have bought some threads, um, mostly for, well, only for Joyful World, um, which doesn't really fall into my no buy category because it's something I was already working on. And so um, I don't consider that like a failure or anything. <laughs> hmm. And then um, the other thing I bought, it was a little bit more of a souvenir, but I'm really excited about it. Um, Unfortunately, it's large. I have a lot of large pieces that I want to work on, so I don't know when this is going to happen. But essentially, um, I was able to get away uh, one of the weekends in early December. Uh, my family had a funeral to attend in Mesa, Arizona, and um, we were able to stop at the Attic Needlework while we were there. So my mother and my sister and I, we all went to the attic. We only had like 30 or 45 minutes, but um, it was amazing. I loved it. I loved it. It was so good. Um, so the shop was a little bit jumbled up because I guess they were um, replacing the floor while we were there. And so like a lot of things were pushed together, kind of out of place, but it was 
Um, the samples were obviously still all there on the wall and the samples were gorgeous. And what I really liked about the samples is they had so many samplers, um, which if you haven't watched my channel before, um, you may not know I'm really into samplers. It's just like my style. Um, and also what I really liked about their shop, their samples, is they were all done on a very small count of fabric, like 46 count or um, I feel like there was even like a 52 count. Like it was crazy, but it was, they were beautiful. I loved them. So this is the one that I picked up. Um, it was way overpriced. Well, I don't know that it was overpriced. It just cost way too much, but it's beautiful. Um, it's called Smith Sampler, and basically it's a reproduction sampler of one that was stitched in the 1830s or 40s. Uh, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I just love the motifs in this sampler. Um, it's a little bit different because there aren't any letters or anything, which usually my samplers have letters, but there is a house. <laughs> so, you know, it fits. And... Um, the only thing I'm not sure about is what threads I'm going to use. So the colors, um, I feel like the colors are a little bit washed out and I'm not sure that um, I really want to do the colors like that. Also a lot of the, well all of the threads that are called for are silk. So they're either Belsois, Dinky Dyes, or Gloriana. And um, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do those or not. So. This still has like a lot of thinking to do behind it, but I love the design um, and I'm gonna do it on a small count like 46. If you do it on a 46 count, I mean this is crazy, a 46 count will still give you an, an eight and three quarters by 13 inches piece in the end, which is still pretty big. I mean, that would be about the size of this paper plus like, two inches on top. So like maybe about the size of this whole envelope. So that's still a pretty good size, even on like such a tiny count. Um, anyway, I think it's beautiful. Like I said, don't know when it'll happen, but it's kind of a good souvenir from um, going to the attic and um, it'll help me remember that weekend, which I think is also really nice. Hmm. That's it for the cocoa. So, um, another thing that I received in the mail, it's not haul, but it is the announcement for the needlework show and sale that I submitted my Hardanger piece to last year. And it's going to be March 1st through 31st. Um, and it's in the same place over by the, um, over in Alexandria and I'm not sure what's gonna happen um, I really wanted to submit a piece this year and I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it or if if I'm gonna make it or not um, it looks like you have to submit it by February 10th um, and that's if it's hand delivered I believe it needs to arrive earlier if you mail it which I may mail it because I think I mentioned in a prior episode that I don't have a car anymore. I lent it to my sister. So it would be difficult to get down there. Um, so entries must arrive no later than February 1st. And so that would really be pushing it for me because I haven't finished one that I want to submit. And like finishing it and then the time that it would take to frame it, I don't know that I would make it. But um, Regardless, I would really love to visit this this the show because I loved it last year. It was so awesome. There were amazing pieces there, and I would really love to do it again this year. So definitely on my list of things to do. Um, and so anybody in the Northern Virginia, Maryland um, area, go to this. It's just amazing. I'm sure you guys all know about it, but... Um, if anybody's going to be in the DC area anytime during March, as long as it's not on a Tuesday, stop by. It's totally worth it. There are amazing pieces there. Anyway, I feel like I've kind of beaten that horse to death. Um, next 
thing to show is a finish. It's not my finish. It's actually finished by my mother. Um, she is a cross stitcher and she made five of these pieces, one for each of her children. And this is the one she gave me. Um, and this is, a <laughs> this is a St. Nicholas Day present, which I thought was sweet. Um, it's a design by Lizzie Kate and it doesn't look like much. It's very small, but you and I all, you know, we all know how much time and effort goes into just a little piece like this. And I love it. So this will, um, go up with the Christmas stuff every year. Um, yeah, I just, I like the colors. It's very sweet and the sentiment. Anyway, it's very sweet. Thanks, Mom. I love it. So, I have one mostly finish uh, since I last recorded. So, it is the Joyful World Style, the July one, which is the Flamingos. And it's only mostly finished because I still need to sign it. But other than that, it's done. I completed it in October when I went home for a weekend. And I think it turned out really cute. I love the flamingos. And look at how you have that little streak of orange for the wing. I love how she did that. I believe I changed the color of these flowers in the corners. Um, I think they were white, if I remember correctly. But I really liked the blue, so I just wanted to put some more of that in. But that's my July Joyful World. And that is my only finish. <laughs> Like I said, I haven't been cross-stitching a whole lot. What I thought I would do for this episode, now that we've gotten through talk, announcements, haul, finishes, <laughs> um, I just wanted to do a whip parade, because I've never done that, and I know that a lot of people were doing that back in the summertime, I feel like, and since I don't know where I was last time we spoke, and I don't know what I've worked on since we last spoke, I thought that it would be nice to go ahead and just show all my whips see so that you guys could see where they are currently I've probably worked on each of them a little bit um, but like I said I don't really remember where they were last time and um, I just didn't really feel like looking at my last video so um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this is a new start um, I completed the July one like I mentioned in October and so I decided to start the November one at that time because I I thought since I completed the July so quickly, I would be able to complete the November before November started. Um, that didn't really happen because after I had that week off, I came home and um, worked. But this is the beginning of it. I believe this is up. <laughs> so that's just um, the peacock's chest there um, with some space open for the wing line. And this is a beautiful color. It's um, dungarees, which, which dungarees was the water in one of the other ones, and I love it. Um, it's really pretty. So anyway, I'll have to work on that one some more. Uh, I haven't started any other ones. Uh, this is just the only one that I have going right now. And then I, of course, have to put my signature on the July one. All right, so the next piece is Liberty's Welcome. Um, I do think I've worked on this one, too, since we last spoke. This is what it looks like. I love it. Um, and I actually, I don't know if you remember, but I actually stopped working on this one for a long time last year after I went to the Needlework show and sale because I saw a version of this there over one on like a 32 or 36 count and I thought it was beautiful and I was like, oh, mine isn't this beautiful. Um, but I have since, um, started up working on it again um and i haven't gotten very very much farther i'm sure than where i was last time i showed it to you but i've completed some of the motifs um the smaller motifs along this side and i think those are all new since since my last video so here's the whole thing first and then you can see Went ahead and started the stars coming out of the chimney there. I have this guy, which I know was done last time we spoke. The date. And then I did this one. Then I have these other ones down the side here. As well as the urn at the bottom with the large flowers in it. 
So overall, I think this is coming along very nicely. Um, I obviously <clears throat> still have a lot to do on it. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and continue working on the motifs, um, but over on this side next, and just kind of go from there. So my next project is um, Little House, uh, Little House Neighborhood by Little House Needleworks. This is the design, and um, I discussed it in my last video, I believe, but I'm not sure. Um, probably not going to do the words. I don't really like the people, um, so that will probably change. And I'm also not positive if I'll do the border, but we'll see. We haven't really gotten to those points yet. Um, so on this one, um, I believe um, I started on this middle house up here on the top, which is new since my last video, I think. Sorry about the siren. This is this is Baltimore. So there we go. That's um, the middle row is complete, and then I went ahead and started up on the top row house. And actually, that fence there is stitched. It just also happens to match the fabric really well, um, but it is stitched. And there we go. That is. The little house neighborhood. Um, I believe this is 32, 32 count, if not 28. Um, it's probably 28 count because I believe I just bought um, what the pattern called for, and yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty wide. So yeah, I would say probably 28 count, and I'm doing this one over one, and that's why it looks so cute. <laughs> anyway, so there's that one. Haven't had a lot of progress on it, and I have wanted to work on these two, the um, little house and neighborhood, as well as Liberty's Welcome. But every time I get close to pulling them out, I think, oh, let's just finish, let's just finish the Hope one. So I'll go ahead and show you the Hope one next. So this is the Hope one. It is a design by Emmy Bishop for Cross and Patch. It's called the Hope Sampler. I love this one. Um, so I'm actually almost done with it, and that's why I... That's why I've been telling myself, like, just focus on the Hope one. Just finish the Hope one, because if I were to submit anything to the Needlework Show and Sale, it would probably be this one. But like I said, um, with the deadlines, I just don't know that I can make that. Um, so I just have a lot of other stuff going on. So, um... Most recently, I did finally complete this row. Um, you may see the, um, the ribbons there and the flowers. So in the sample, they did blue ribbons with pink flowers. And I don't really like, I didn't really like the combination. I didn't really like the colors. Um, and so I went ahead and changed them to lavender to match the faith one that I did a couple years ago. Um, unfortunately, the lavender flowers blend in very well with the lavender ribbon. Um, it's not as bad up here as it is a little lower down in the cross stitch, but um, I, I think it's still, you know, I think it still works and it's very pretty. So, oh, sorry. Um, so I love, I love this one. Um, so here's the alphabet section. And then this is probably my favorite band, is the Hope Band. I just love how the um, the letter, the the color that the letters are stitched in is a tan, but um, to me, and I'm not sure if this comes across on the camera or not, it really just looks like a very like pale olive green, which I love. And the flowers in here just look so pretty. And then I love the scalloped um, motif on the bottom and the top, and then also the hem stitch technique is so pretty. So that's probably my favorite band. Um, I just love everything about it. <laughs> the next one is not complete yet. Um, it's all um, stitched off and cut out, but it still needs to be completed. And I can show you real quick. 
this is a sample on the back and if you can if you can tell the blue thread there it's just wrapped around the cut pieces and that's the style of that band and I'm not sure if I like that style or not so I'm deciding whether I want to do that as is called for or if I want to wrap that entire thing so you know it'll look like this with the dove's eyes and the woven bars um, I just don't know because this would be a lot of work but it I, I and I don't even know that it would look better I'm not sure so this is the bottom band that I'm about to show you okay um, I don't know why that's not focusing so you can see again that we have the blue ribbon and the pink flowers and again I changed both of those to lavender and it works a little less well in the bottom band because then you can't really see the ribbon um, winding in and out of the flowers like you can see it down here with the blue against the pink. So I'll show that to you in a minute and then also this hardinger portion um, if you know me or if you've watched my videos before you probably remember I do not like hearts um, I did complete all of the hearts the satin stitch hearts like are here up um, in the upper part of the sampler but this was just too much for me I couldn't I couldn't stomach this so I went ahead and changed this to like just full diamonds um, so I'll go ahead and show you that now So this is my bottom band. You can see I'm about halfway done with the bottom, with the Hardinger portion. So again, I did purple flowers and vines with like a little yellow accent, which I thought was really nice. And then um, the ribbon is also lavender. And it's a little harder to see the bows here and it's pretty much impossible to see the ribbon winding in and out of the um, flower garland. But, you know, I think it's probably okay. Um, and like I said, this way it will match the faith piece that I completed earlier. Um, and then here is the diamond portion. And I'm not quite sure how I'm going to cut this out. Probably just, I'll probably cut out all of this in the middle and then just do like dove's eyes around the outline or something. Um, and I'm thinking um, so that this, so that all of them look like this one, I will go ahead and put some, um, what are those called? <laughs> cluster blocks. Oh my gosh. Uh, some cluster blocks here and here. <laughs> so that they all kind of have this hourglass shape. And there will be four of them. One, two, three, four. Um, so yeah, that is the Hope Sampler. And like I said, if, um, if anything is submitted to the Needlework Show and Sale, I would like this to be, um, it's getting a little dark outside, so I'm not sure that you really saw the color so great, but, um, I think it looks really nice in real life, if that, if that helps any. Uh, so there's that one. And then my last piece, which I would love to submit to the Show and Sale, but it's just completely not going to happen is my chatelaine. So my chatelaine is Hortus viridarium, which is a small mandala. Um, and I believe since I last showed this to you, I've added these little fleur de lis designs in the corners. And you can see that I've started working on the little water streams up here. Um, this was a little bit of a pain, just the counting and making sure everything was right. I actually made one mistake at the very beginning without realizing until I got almost to the very end. Um, but then I found that I made another mistake that would prevent me from <laughs> having to cut everything out because the second mistake corrected the first one. So I only had to cut a little bit out. Um, but you can see they are all um, congruent. And I think it looks really nice. <laughs> um, this is going to be a beautiful piece um, when I finish it, because I'm going to finish it. 
<laughs> just don't know when. Um, it's a little bit daunting when I look at this and I'm, you know, just working on this little piece up here um, to realize that all of this is filled in solid pretty much with like specialty stitches and cross stitches alike. Um, so it's going to be a lot of work, but it, like I said, it's gorgeous. And I mean, you know, this centerpiece is just giving me a little flavor of what's going to come and I love it. And that's even without the beads, of course. Um, all, all this green space in here, which is just the fabric, will be filled with beads, of course, so. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's my whip parade, <laughs> not a very long parade. Um, yeah, but I think, you know, I'm making some good progress on these, even though I'm not working on them too much. Um, I guess my goal for the new year in Hobbyland would be, um, well, I would love to finish this piece and I would love to start a new large piece like Christmas Garden, which I've talked about before. It's a Blackbird Designs. Um, my mom gave me the pattern last year for my birthday, which is in March. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I think it's about time I start it. Um, so I would love to do that. And I was actually reading it reading that pattern the other day and it's actually like a maternal family tree which I think is really cool and so there are four sets of initials in there and they are those of the stitcher her mother her grandmother and her great-grandmother and I thought that was a great idea so I'm gonna do that and then after you frame it on the back you write the full names so you know for posterity's sake they know um, to whom the initials refer so anyway, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and I love the colors in that one. That one was actually, I believe there was a sample of that one at the attic and it was gorgeous. I loved it. There was definitely a sample of the Tis the Season one, which is the cardinal with like the snowflakes and um, the vine, I believe there's a vine. Anyway, I love that one too. That one um, I'll definitely be doing someday and that one was beautiful. They did it at the, the attic as well, and so, yeah, the attic really, like, kicked me in the pants and got me wanting to do some cross-stitch again, so. Anyway, um, I've been enjoying all your videos when I can catch them, and I love all the, like, New Year's goals videos, like 2018 videos. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be able to record again. Uh, I think I'll try to be a little bit more regular so I can remember what I showed you last and how far I've gotten since then. Um, but again, it's not really as fun to make videos when I haven't made as much progress. So um, there's that. Anyway, so I just want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thanks for watching my channel and I'll see you in 2018. Until then, happy stitching. Bye.